and to be able to estimate the date of conception of that child and to know if you are responsible for the pregnancy or not. Is it really possible to know who is the father of a child without actually doing a DNA paternity test? Is it possible? Are there ways for one to know, to check, to double check? You know, <laughs> if a man is the real father of a child, yes, there are ways to check. And if you stick with me to the end of this video, I will show you some simple practical ways and they are free so you're not going to spend a dime right that you can use to to some great extent determine if a man is really the father of a child or not and this video is very important because of course dna tests could be expensive sometimes and when a parent is having doubts concerning the paternity or the fatherhood of a child it's really a strongly emotional issue and so this video can help in situations like that and quickly i am not in any way presenting this video as the ultimate check and paternity detector no i am not in fact the gold standard when it comes to checking for fatherhood or paternity is the dna test and it is the most reliable method and so i'm not taking responsibility on how you use this video to make your decisions i'm just giving simple scientific knowledge here and so quickly let's take a look at some of the practical ways and tools that you can use to determine the possibility of paternity number one estimate the date of conception now if you can estimate the possible day of conception of that child where the child was actually formed, then you can roughly tell who the father is. Now, this method has some drawbacks and some limitations, but let's take a look at how it works. First, for a woman who has regular menstrual cycle and therefore has clear cut ovulation period. Ovulation period is the period where the woman is most likely to take in to get pregnant, the period in the month when the woman is most likely to get pregnant. So if a woman has a regular or fairly regular menstrual cycle and you can easily detect the ovulation period and therefore the period most likely that conception would have taken place, one could extrapolate and say who the possible father is. Now we're taking for granted that the woman didn't have sexual intercourse with more than one man during that period because then it will become even more difficult so as a father if you know the age of the pregnancy or the day of delivery of the child you can trace back to where the conception actually happened using the rough estimate that pregnancy lasts for nine months and so you could add those few weeks to know the exact period where the conception should have taken place so if you were the person that met with her during that period and you can calculate down to the date of delivery or the age of the pregnancy you will be able to have a rough estimate if you are the father or not i hope this is clear to further help you i have done an extensive video on how to calculate your safe period and your ovulation period and i will place the link to that video in the cards above or in the description section below so you can know how to calculate the safe period and your ovulation period and to be able to estimate the date of conception of that child and to know if you are responsible for the pregnancy or not but the limitation here is that it does not rely the fact that having intercourse with more than one man during that ovulation period can affect the results. Then secondly, if the woman doesn't have regular menstrual cycle or a clear cut ovulation date, this might not work that effectively. The second method here is using the blood group test. This is very powerful. In fact, before the advent of DNA test, the blood group test is what was being used regularly typically and this is very important because unlike other methods that we will be mentioning later on the blood group of the child is taken directly from both parents and so there's nothing like hey no this is from my mother's side or from my father's side no the blood group of the child is directly and only exclusively from the parents and so with that we will be able to exclude we might not be able to say that you exactly are the father of the child, but we will be able to exclude you 
if you are not the father. I hope this is clear. The drawback here is that two or three men can have the same blood group and so it might not really help in situations where we are contesting among different men who the father is. But basically using the ABO system and using the blood group paternity test chart, we will be able to know the possible blood group type of the child by merging the mother's blood group type and the father's blood group type. So for example, if a man is blood group O and the woman is blood group O, all the children must be blood group O because this is the father's blood group O and then this is the mother's blood group O. All the children must be blood group O. So if as a man you are blood group O and your wife is blood group O and you have a child who is A or B or AB, well, there might be some issues there. You, you should step up and do a DNA paternity test. I hope this is clear. You can pause this video and take a screenshot of this chart or I will place a link to this chart in the description section below so you can use it to match both the father and the mother's blood group type to know the possibilities that can arise when it comes to the child's blood group type. I hope this is clear. This is clear and straightforward. But as we say, the limitation here is that um, two or three fathers can have the same blood group type. And so it, it will become difficult to know who the real father is. That's the limitation here. But I thought it wise to share it with you because it is very effective in some cases and could just be the deal breaker in some cases. If you find this video very helpful, don't forget to hit the like button and stay subscribed to this YouTube channel. The third method here is phenotype. That's the physical appearance and the physical characteristics of the child and this is one that is very easy and that most people employ in this video i want to share with you some of the specific body parts that you should look out for so the truth is that no matter how unlike the father a child is there almost always will be one or two physical feature that the child will take from the father. I hope that statement is clear. And so if you look at the child, most times you should be able to pick one or two things, even if it means just one or two features that the child has that is same or similar in the father. And one body part to look out for, surprisingly, are the feet, the feet of the child. To a great extent, we discovered that the feet of the child is one body part that readily helps with determining the possibility of fatherhood. And in the feet, especially the toes. Apart from that, facial features like the shape of the face, the eyes, the ears, the ear lobes, the hair type. And the drawback here is that sometimes a child might not look like the father, but rather will look like a relative of the mother or a relative of the father. And so it might be difficult to pick some of these physical features. However, if you look closely, at least one physical feature will be obvious. However, if none is completely obvious, then um, a DNA paternity test would be very helpful. If you are having some doubt issues. The next point here is genetic behavior. Apart from physical body features, right? Like facial features, the features of the body being transmitted from the father to the child. Non-physical features like behaviors can also be transmitted from the father to the child. So like sleeping pattern, sleeping position, walking, the posture, the way of eating, the way of talking, there are different behaviors, gestures, and even some thinking patterns, some character pattern, decision making, and even personality, intelligence. So some of these things can be passed on from the father to the child. So one of the ways to check for paternity is to check for peculiar behavior that are in the father that might be in this child. Especially if you have two or three candidates of fatherhood, um, some of these be behaviors can just let the cat out of the bag and just expose the father almost dramatically because the behavior pattern or the way of doing things will just tell who the father is. And so this is one very important way to use in determining paternity and fatherhood. Another way of determining 
paternity without using DNA test is some group of specialized tests that specialists in determining paternity use apart from using DNA, including things like eye color test, eye color test. So the initiated eye will be able to detect some subtle changes in the color of the eye, comparing it with the father and the child. Apart from that, we have things like ear lobe test, hair color test, and there are several things you can do with the hair. The hair texture, the hair position, the hair shape, and even the hair color, right? Then there are other things like the tongue test, like the ability to roll the tongue, lift the tongue, and there are other tests, other specialized tests that are usually best left for the specialists to be able to do because they have some tools and charts to use for these special tests. Some of these things I mentioned in this video are very powerful and can help. They are not the gold standard and they shouldn't be used exclusively to make major decisions, no. However, they can help to support your knowledge and your confirmation, but definitely DNA paternity test is the gold standard. If you find this video very helpful, don't forget to hit the like button and stay subscribed to this YouTube channel. And I have a free gift for you. It's a free download that will help you to enjoy total health, ideal weight and better sex. And you can get it by clicking the link in the description section below. Take charge of your health and happiness and I will see you in the next one.